Welcome to the Wareham Conservation Commission meeting of Wednesday, June 1st, 2022, June. God, time goes fast. All right, we have Kwame, Michael, Elisa, Denise, and myself. Anybody else? Okay, so we have a quorum. Uh, we're gonna start with minutes. We have a set of minutes from January 5th, 2022. Move to accept the minutes from January 5th, 2022. Second. Move to behave. Move they down. Okay. Um, Denise and Alyssa, you both missed this meeting. Did you fill out the forms? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. So I have a motion and a second to accept. All in favor, Kwame? Yes. Michael, Alyssa, yes. Denise, Sandy? Yes, five zero zero. And on our minutes, we have, we have, um, I'm working on April 20th. David's working on April 25th. Nicole is working on May 4th. Who would like to take May 18th? <laughs> I need a taker. <laughs> Did I see a hand up, Kwame? But I'll take May 18th. Thank you. And who will take tonight? I'll take tonight if you need me to. Thank you, Michael. No problem. Thank you. So that's it. I'll sign those minutes and get them in. Okay. Um, Denise, is it chance you can read the public hearings for us? Hello. Right. Alyssa always Alyssa, does it. Alyssa's here. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Alyssa. Could be one okay. of your last times. I got another one next two weeks. Oh, okay. Notice of public hearings. Pursuant to the provisions of the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act, General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Wareham Wetland Protective Bylaw Division 6. A public hearing will be held on Wednesday, June 1st, 2022, at 6.30 p.m. on the request for determination of applicability for Beth Ann Schweitzer, care of Schneider, Davignon, and Leone, P.O. Box 480, Mattapoisett, Mass 02539. To construct a carport and a shed located on Assessor's Map 59, lots W125, W126, 1032, 168 Ave, Wareham, Mass. Thank you. Is there anybody online representing this project? Yes, Madam Chair. Dave Devigman representing. Devigman. Sorry Thank about you. that. All right, Mr. Pichette. Um, yeah, so this project site is at 16th Avenue and the project involves the construction of a carport and a shed in the buffer zone to a coastal bank and within the riverfront area of the Weeweanic River. Um, a 12 by 17 foot carport and an eight by 12 foot shed are proposed approximately 50 feet from the top of the coastal bank and within the riverfront area. Um, the carport and shed would be supported on precast concrete footings. Um, the carport and shed would be between the house and the road as shown on the plan, um, as you can see on that bottom um, section. The area already has an old carport and shed in the same general location as the proposed new structures. Um, there is also an existing gravel driveway to the carport that's currently there. Um, the only question I had on this was how many footings are going to be required for this for these two features. Um, but other than that, I had no problem with the project and would recommend the issuance of a negative determination number two for the project. Dave, can you, can you answer Dave's question? Yes, um, four sauna tubes per structure. Anything else you'd like to add? Um, no, Dave summarized it. It is a very straightforward project. Simply replacement of two structures that are there with two new structures in the same general footprint. Thank you. Questions on the commission? Kwame? Uh, no questions. Thank you. Michael? 
Yeah, I just got one. Has work already began on this project or not? Not as far as I'm aware. There are renovations occurring inside uh, to the dwelling, but no, nothing outside the footprint. Okay, because I went down there today and it seemed like maybe it was the renovations I was looking at because uh, it, it did seem like there was uh, some work being done down there. I couldn't and I, I couldn't find where these uh, where, where the carports and the sheds were. Uh, so perhaps that, that that was it. I was seeing maybe it was there the the uh, renovations of the house. But um, but uh, okay. Thank you very much, Michael. If you were to go down the gravel driveway behind the fence, you'd see where the carport and uh, existing shed are. So they're behind the fence. Uh, gotcha. Thanks. They're hidden by they're hidden by some you know substantial growth of shrubbery that too street. yeah and a pretty a pretty old nasty fence um, gotcha. okay thank you uh, elisa i think it's a project we should accept with the negative two it seems to be on the same <clears throat> footprint and the house actually michael has a lot of shingling going on but not not this it has some repairs to the house but <clears throat> not not the garage port carport or the shed. All right, thank you. Denise. I mean, it's the same. I was there with Elisa today. Uh, the carport, I think, is actually going to be a little bit on a smaller footprint than it presently is. And um, it's going to be a plus to the uh, to the home itself. Yeah. OK. Um, I have none. Nicole, are you on? I am. Thank you. Do you have any questions? I don't. Seems pretty straightforward. Carol, Carol, Carol's on too, Sandy. Carol? Yes, no, I have no questions. Okay. We're all here. Is there anybody I, I, on the line that would like to comment on this project? Move to close the hearing. I have a motion to close the hearing. Second. And a second. All in favor, Carol? Yes. Courtney, yes. Michael? Elisa, yep. yeah. Denise, yeah. Sandy, the hearing is closed. Move to accept move the project. Accept the pro project with a negative two. Second. I have a motion and a second for a negative two. All in favor, Carol. Yes. Kwame, Michael, yes. Yep. Elisa, yes. Denise, Sandy, done. And so Dave, please yeah. see Mr. Bichette before you start any work. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Ready? Please hearing, please. Yes. Notice of public hearing pursuant to the provisions of the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act, General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Wareham Wetland Protective Bylaw, Division 6. A public hearing will be held on Wednesday, June 1, 2022, at 6.30 p.m. on the Notice of Intent for Kevin Perkins, oh, yeah. care of Zenith Consulting Engineers, LLC, 3 Main Street, Lakeville, Mass, 02347, to install a tight tank and a well located on Assessor's Map 129, Lot 1042, 31 Old Woods Road, Wareham, Mass. Thank you. Is there anybody here representing this project? Please identify yourself. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair. Niall Zager from Zenith Consulting Engineers. Thank you. Um, what a nice little out of the way place. Mr. Bichette, will you read the project, please? Um, yes, the site is at 31 Old Woods Road and the project involves the installation of a tight tank septic system and a new well within the buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetland. Um, a tight tank system is proposed at this existing cottage as there is currently no septic system at this location. Um, the proposed tanks would be approximately 60 feet from the closest wetland, which would be the adjacent drainage ditch or canal along the side of the property. Um, the tanks would be outside the buffer zone to the adjacent cranberry bog in the back and approximately 100 feet to the wetlands adjacent to Spectacle Pond. Um, a drinking water well is also proposed approximately 60 feet from the wetland along Spectacle Pond. Um, I did have a question about what would be or how the drill rig would get into this area and for the pump off for the um, 
well is that just going to be directed into that um, dewatering basin so i just had those two quick questions um, erosion control is proposed between the work and the wetland resource area um, while i was at the site uh, it was also noted that um, there had been alteration of wetlands along the edge of spectacle pond um, there's been vegetation that's been removed in in the wetland and in the buffer zone to the well. Um, the altered wetland should be restored along with the 30 foot no activity zone. Uh, we did get a DEP file number for this project, uh, but at this time I would, would recommend the hearing be continued to the next meeting so we can get a revised plan to show the restoration of the altered border and vegetated wetland and no activity zone at the site. Yeah, Niles, anything to add? Well, um, so to answer the question about the drill rig, I think it's fairly simple. They will come down along the existing drive um, around the right side of the home or the south side of the home and back right into where the well uh, is proposed and get it in right there. As far as uh, discharge, I agree that would get pumped off into the dewatering basin that was proposed. I think that's the best suited area for it. Um, so I think that answers those two questions. And we are aware of the, um, the disturbed area. Uh, when myself and David had been out on the site, we, we uh, realized that that was there. Um, the homeowner was there at the time, uh, Mr. Perkins, who I believe is on the line. And uh, we're aware that it needs to be remedied and we will you know, do uh, what we have to do to, to meet with Mr. Bichette and come up with a plan that is acceptable. Okay. Thank you. Uh, questions on the commission? Carol? No questions. Kwame? Uh, no questions. Thank you. Michael? Uh, not at this time. Thank you. Lisa? I have a quick one, and that is how often does a, a tank like this have to be pumped out with a one-bedroom house? So, so that's actually a really good question. It is not an easy answer. It really depends on, um, so this is it's basically a 2,000 gallons total flow. They, they, it's, a, as you know, very seasonal use. It's only gonna be used in the summer months. So, and they, I believe they only plan on being there during the weekends. Um, so it's really a, a matter of, um, it's really a matter of how often they're showering, how often they're, you know, doing dishes or, I don't believe they'd probably be doing much laundry there or anything like that. Um, so it'd be very limited. And the way this works is there's an alarm in the tank, in the second tank. So when it fills up, um, it gets to a certain level and it alarms them to, to have it pumped. So mm -hmm. it could, could be a month. It could be three months. It, it, it could be two weeks. It just depends on what they're doing over there. Okay. Anything else? Not Denise? Uh, Niles, last name. I could not get that. Zager, Z-A-G-E-R. Okay. And then you said that there was an alarm. That was my question. How do they know when to empty this thing? Yeah, there's, there's an alarm in the tank, and it's, it's, it's piped. It's, uh, it's run back to the home, and it's a visual alarm, audio and visual alarm that goes off, and it needs to be pumped. Okay, thank That's you. That's a requirement under Title V. Nicole? Uh, no questions. And my, <clears throat> Niles, my question is, if the alarm is, I'm going to say, ignored, what happens? Where, where is the over, is there an overflow in the tank? So there's, a, there's a, an additional 24-hour theoretical capacity. Um, you know, for something like this, it'd be much more than that, but it's a 24-hour capacity um, additional uh, flow in the tank to be able to handle it. Um, so there is this plenty of extra storage in there for it to be done. And what the Board of Health is going to require that they're on a maintenance program and a pumping program that the uh, uh, okay. pumping records would need to be provided and a contractor would be needed to provide it to the Board of Health ensuring that this is taken care of properly. Were you on the BO, were you on the Board of Health meeting this afternoon? We were not, no, we do, this doesn't actually require any variances or any notifications for butter. So this is something that the board can 
uh, approved in house. So okay. we, we were not we were not required to be on the board meeting. No. I just didn't want the little sucker overflowing and going into the pond. Neither do we. Okay. Is there anybody on the line on the line that would like to speak to this project? Hearing none. I say we make a motion to uh, continue the hearing with um, revised uh, plan for the restricted area. Until 6.15, Niles, six. at that time, 6.15, good enough? Um, when is the next meeting? The 15th of June. No, you're saying uh, after that. After, I'm sorry, after that, I apologize. Yeah, July 6th. All right, let's, let's shoot for uh, June 15th and uh, David, I'll try to work with you on some sort of a plan and then uh, hopefully get something over to you before that meeting. Very good. And if, if, if necessary, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll ask for continuance. Sure. Okay. I'll second Kwame's uh, motion. All in favor, Carol. Yes. Kwame, Michael, yes. Elisa, yes. Denise, Sandy, we're continued until 6.15. Thank you very much. Okay, wait a second. We are into continued public hearings. We have a notice of a request to continue Wareham MA3, which is 91101 Faring Hill. I forgot, did they give us a time for continuation or just what a request? um just a request uh to the next meeting basically which okay. is the 615. okay so i just wanted if there's anybody online looking for faring hill we're go it's going to be continued the next uh continued hearing is sarah john realty at the 150 blackmore pond road is there anybody here for that project yes am i Melly with jc engineering okay mr bichette Okay. I recall we continue this because it had not been staked out, correct? Right. Correct. That's right. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so this um, project site is 150 Blackmore Pond Road, and the project involves site work in the buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetland associated with the construction of a single family dwelling, driveway, and septic system. Um, the proposed driveway to access the house and some clearing work would take place within the buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetland that exists on the other side of Blackmore Pond Road. Um, the proposed house septic in the septic system are outside the buffer zone to the wetland. Um, as we just discussed at the last meeting, the site had not been staked out. And so the project, the hearing was continued. Um, there will be some grade changes uh, around the proposed house as shown on the plan. Um, but with that, I would recommend um, the approval of the project with a negative determination number three. Sam, anything to add? Uh, no further comment. Questions on the commission? Carol, Kwame. No questions, thank you. Michael. Uh, no, thank you. Elisa. No, thank you. Denise. No questions, thank you. Nicole. No questions, thank you. Is there anybody online that would like to comment on this project? See Dan. I'm Move. not hearing anybody. Move to close the hearing. I have a motion yeah. and a second. second to close the hearing. Carol. Yes. Kwame, Michael. Yes. Yep. Elisa. Denise. Yes. Sam, the hearing is closed. I move that we accept this project with a negative three. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second for a negative three. All in favor, Carol? Yes. Kwame, Michael, yes. Lisa, Denise, and myself, yes. yes.
The next continue hearing is Sarah John Realty, 152 Blackmore Pond Road. And Sam, I guess you're up for this one too? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bouchette. Okay, so <clears throat> this project site is um, the adjacent lot to the one we just reviewed, 152 Blackmore Pond Road. And this project also involves site work in the buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetland associated with the construction of a single family dwelling, driveway and septic system. Um, again, the proposed driveway to access the house and some clearing work would be within the buffer zone to the wetland that exists on the other side of Blackmore Pond Road. Um, and again, the house and septic system are outside the buffer zone to the wetland. Um, again, there is some proposed grading around the house and septic system, as you can see um, on the plan. And the um, wetland line in the back of the property was, was reviewed as well. And so I didn't have any changes um, on that. So I would recommend again, the approval of the project with a negative determination number three. Thank you, Sam, anything to add? No comment, no. Thank you. Questions, Carol? No questions. Kwame? No questions, thank you. Michael? Yeah, just outside the project, what's your last name? I am Ellie, spelled I-A-M-E-L-E. I, -E -E. I, I'm sorry, I, I, I have an awful connection, I, internet connection out here. I, a what? I-A-M-E-L-E. -E. Yep. E thank you very much. Go ahead, continue, anybody else? Alyssa? No, no question. Denise? No questions. Nicole? No questions. I have none. Is there anybody online that would like to comment on this project? Hearing and seeing none. Move to close the hearing. Second. second. I have a motion and a second to close the hearing in favor. Carol. Yes. Kwame. Yes. Michael. Alyssa. Yes. Denise. Yes. Sandy. Yes. The hearing is closed. I move that we accept the project with a negative three. Second. I have a motion and a second for a negative three. All in favor, Carol? Yes. Tommy? Yes. Michael, Elisa? Yeah. Yes. Denise? Yes. Sandy? Yes. It's approved. And Sam, no work until you get your paperwork from Mr. Bichette, okay? Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good evening. Have a good evening. Okay, next continued hearing. Chair Korean Services. And is there anybody here representing this project? I'm Phil Madden from GAF. All right, oh, Mr. Bichette. Okay, I'm just getting the plan pulled up here. I call that a very flat surface. Okay. Um, so this project site is off Charge Pond Road, lots 1002B and 1008. And the project involves the installation of a solar array within the buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetland. A 196 kilowatt solar array is proposed approximately 50 feet from the edge of the wetland, which is existing cranberry bog an irrigation pond at the site. Um, this solar array is proposed to provide electricity for the property owner and their farming operation. Um, the solar array area is approximately 1.5 acres in size. Um, there is no tree clearing that would be needed uh, as the proposed location is within previously cleared land. Um, the panels would be supported on a metal racking system. 
um, when I did go out and review the site, um, I did notice there'd been some other activity out there, which included um, the clearing of some forested land, um, approximately six acres or so. Uh, some of this was in the buffer zone to wetland and was not something that was reviewed by the commission. Um, this area is just to the north of where the proposed solar array is to be located. Um, the owner stated that this was going to be used as uh, a sand source for cranberry operations. Um, there has also been some bogs that were squared off and a bypass canal that has been or is in the process of being installed. Um, some of these activities um, would likely be exempt activities, but some of the clearing work, uh, in my opinion, would not be. Uh, this activity should have been reviewed by the commission. Um, as far as the project that's proposed, we did get a DEP file number for that. Um, I don't have a problem with the small proposed solar array, but the other work does need to be addressed. Um, so as far as this hearing goes, the commission could approve this project and then require a separate filing in review of the other work or you could continue this hearing and require a revised plan showing the other activity as well. So that's sort of the choices on, on this as it stands. Okay, Bill, any comments, please? Um, we'd prefer to have the, obviously have the project move forward um, and address the, um, the other items that Dave brought up in a, as, a step, as a separate matter. It is, separate and distinct from, from this work. And, um, you know, that would just be our hope that the commission might find it within themselves to issue the order for the solar project and uh, whatever else is, whatever they require for the, uh, the, the so-called unapproved activities. Okay, um, I'm gonna start with Carol. No questions on the solar project, no. And would you like to see it as a whole or wait until um, it is expanded to identify the area that had been cleared? I would prefer to finalize the solar array first and address the other as a separate entity. Thank you. Kwame, any questions? Uh, no questions about the solar array. Would you like to have it standalone or combined with uh, another plan? I would like to have this as a standalone project. Thank you, Michael. Um, at the very, very top of the solar array project, it, like the like the very far in front off of this project, are, is, is this uh, are we looking at any like uh, areas potentially in? Because um, it, it looks like it's like it goes into like any uh, like like. Um, I'm like I'm like look 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 at this on the map here. Does it does it go into any potential areas, say like a possible wetlands area or further? Because it does seem like on the map, it does seem to say like uh, it, it does seem to cross over. So is that part of the areas that that would be of any concern or not? That's why Mr. Bouchette has asked for a separate uh, filing for the activity that has occurred in. Um, um, up against some wetlands north of where this project is. So that's what we're looking for. Do we have a separate hearing for that or do we combine oh. it with the, what's in front of us? Okay, so that's fine. So so we should have a separate hearing for that then. So we'll, we'll move forward with the solar array then, we'll, then we'll have a separate hearing for that then. That's fine. Yes, I think that's what I'm hearing from the commission. Okay. Alyssa. Um, David, and which do you prefer? I know Sandy said you'd prefer to have two projects pass one. What do you what do you say, David? Um, well, like I said, it's it's really a judgment call of the commission. I do believe it's something that the commission um, should have had a chance to review um, prior to the work being done. So I do see that as a violation. Um, but again, it's purely a judgment call as to whether we handle it as uh, a separate ent issue or require a continued hearing. So it would it be a cease and desist order until they bring it forward? 
I would say that's how, yes, we could issue an enforcement order if that's the commission's wish. The owner has indicated that they are going to, you know, submit an application on that. So again, that's up to the commission. If you want to do that, we certainly can. I think that would be appropriate um, and that we, it seems that you're in favor of this solar, you don't have any project, any problems with this solar array. Um, but I do think that, I think that it should be a cease and desist and there should also probably be those, those inevitable fines type of thing. Okay, so, all right. So you would see them combined and I've got three that no. want this to stand alone. Not, excuse me, that's a standalone on the solar array with a cease and desist on the um, digging. Well, we, we can call it an enforcement, we would issue an enforcement order on the land north of the solar array. There you are. And that will be a stop and no more work until they have a hearing in front of us. Yes. But right now, I, so you're all right with handling the project that's in front of us for the small solar array. Yes. Okay, Denise. I concur with Elisa that we need the enforcement order, but we can have it as a standalone. Okay, Nicole. Uh, no questions on the solar array. I have none. So what I'm looking for is that we will continue with the uh, vote on the hearing of Sher Cran for this um, solar array that's in front of us. I believe that was part of this, what, 61-8 lamb that was recently uh, handled. And, as, and then I will take a vote on the enforcement order for the land north of this project. So I will go for, is there anybody on the line that would like to comment on the Sher Cran services solar array that's on the plans in front of us. I'm hearing none, I'm seeing none. Do we close part of this, the one portion of the hearing and go to an enforcement order? How is that nope. handled? I'm going to have a, this one handled by itself and then I'm going to ask for a vote on an enforcement order above and beyond this okay. plan that's in front of us. And I move to close the hearing on the solar portion. Second. I have a motion and a second to close the hearing. All in favor, Carol, Corey, yes. Yes. Michael, yes. Elisa, Denise, yes. Sandy. Yes, we've closed the hearing. We'll move to approve the project. Second. With the standard order of conditions. With the standard order of conditions. Second. All in favor, I have a second. All in favor, Carol. Yes. Yes. Michael, Elisa, yes. Denise, Sandy. Yes. That means that's done. And uh, Bill, before you start any work, see Mr. Bichette. But then uh, the second issue is that uh, I believe we need to have an enforcement order issued for the land north of this project that has been used for clearing and clearing in the, where's my notes? In the buffer zone. In the buffer zone. Have they started to remove the sand yet? Um, yes, there has been a certain amount of that that has been done, yes. And so that could very well be for the agriculture component, which doesn't need our approval, but I'd like to have a um, plan for this activity that is within the uh, buffer zone of the wetland. So someone would like to make a motion to issue enforcement order for that piece of land. What do you want to call it? North of the array? So moved. So moved. Second. All in favor, Carol? Yes. Kwame? Yes. Michael? Yes. Elisa? Yes. Denise? Yes. Sandy? Okay, so um, Mr. Pichette will issue an enforcement order that will stop all the work on that project north of the array. Okay. I'm just making my note. And then we'll, when do we deal with the fines? 
when we have the when they come back with us with the plan. Okay. Because right now we can't do anything until we know what they're working on. Um. Okay, enforcement orders issued. Do you have a question, Bill? The only question that I had is um, if I think that you stated that they were conducting some agricultural agricultural activities associated with the sand. Um, if they were in the process of doing that, will that still be allowed to continue on? Well, I no, would say I think, no. Yeah, I would I say no. Right. They can't do anything in that site now because of this enforcement order. They can't remove the sand. They can't disturb anything. It stops until we get a, uh, probably in what, RDA or notice of intent, Mr. Pichette? I would say it would be a notice of intent. For that clearing of the land, uh, a buffer to the wetlands north of the- Right, and for whatever they're proposing beyond that. There, there's no work up there now. It stops. Okay. Very good, thank you. Thank you. The next hearing is Wareham PV1. Is there anybody here for that project? Yes, good evening. I'm Christopher Wagner, uh, environmental scientist with VHB. And also with me is Betsy Mason from Clavens Law Group, who is uh, Council for the applicant. Um, Mr. Pichette. Sure, let me just get this plan here. Now, Christopher, this has been in front of planning, correct? That's right. And I listened to that hearing. Okie dokie. <clears throat> okay, so this is the project that's at zero route 25, and this project involves the construction of a commercial solar array in the buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetland, isolated vegetation, isolated vegetated wetland, and within riverfront area. Um, a 3.5 megawatt solar array is proposed. Um, on this property. Some of the land uh, has already been cleared at the site, but the project would also require um, clearing additional acreage of wooded land. Um, at the last meeting, we had discussed some issues with regards to work within the riverfront area. Um, it was my recommendation then and still is now that there should be no alteration of the riverfront area for the project. Um, also at the last meeting, there was discussion as to whether or not there had been some um, work at the site already that already occurred within the buffer zone to wetlands with no approval uh, from the commission by the property owner. Uh, so I did review this matter and did find that um, the majority of any work that was done on this site previous was not in the buffer zone to wetlands. Um, as they existed at the time, but there was a small portion of area that was altered that would have been within the buffer zone to existing bog and also um, to an isolated wetland uh, at the eastern corner of the site. Um, so in my opinion, there was some work done in the buffer zone that we did not review or approve. Um, so this can be addressed um, in a couple of ways through this particular application uh, as after the fact work uh, requested as part of it. Um, it is within a distance that the commission would have approved or could have approved since it was not within 50 feet of any wetland area. Um, the project has also been reviewed by the town's engineer um, who did determine that the stormwater structures proposed were adequate for the project. We do have a DEP file number for this project. Um, 
But at this time, I would recommend the hearing be continued so that we get a revised plan showing um, no disturbance of the riverfront area. That's my recommendation. When you mean no disturbance of the riverfront, do you mean you're talking about that 4780 square yards, square feet of? Yes, and that portion where the riverfront crept onto the site, which I can pull up onto this. And at the same time, can you also show us where you believe the violation occurred? Yes, I'll show you on this map here, because uh, it's the easiest one to see. So where this property gets very narrow up here on this bubble, um, there was existing cranberry bog here, and there was alteration within 100 feet of that. And there's also wetland down in this corner right here. Um, and there was some disturbance just within the buffer zone of that down in this corner. So those are the two spots where there was some work done in the buffer zone. The rest of all of this land that was altered, um, when that occurred, that was outside the buffer to any wetland resource areas. Okay. So you were going to continue this <clears throat> wanting to, okay, sorry. Let's go back to what we know has uh, come close within the 200 foot of the um, stream, that one little section. Christopher, was that modified at all to accommodate our concern for that wetland? Yes, it was. And uh, Dave, I guess you didn't get the plans that I sent to you because I, I did send you a set of revised plans that showed that um, work area being pulled out of the riverfront area. I can share my screen and, and sort of show the area right, right now as it exists on the plans now, if that would help. Yes, um, Yeah, that's fine. I, I didn't recall seeing any revised plans. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I I did just I only sent them today, so it's not like oh, we, you okay. know they, it's That's... not like they were sent a week ago because they we only just finished the revision and stamping them uh, I see. today. Okay. So, so that's yeah. probably why I didn't see it. Yeah. So all right, um, but I will let you share a screen. Hold on one second. <clears throat> okay, let yeah. me just pull this up. Okay, uh, can, can you all see this? Yes. Great. So this is, um, this is the same uh, viewport as we were looking at before. And down at the bottom of the page, you can see this, this is the, actually, let me, let me zoom in on it just a little bit. Uh, you can see that this is uh, that sliver of riverfront area that comes onto the site. This is that 4,780 square feet. And the work has been pulled out of there. Uh, uh, panel arrays that were <clears throat> that were in the in the riverfront area have been pulled out. And the fence line has also been pulled out to just beyond the 200 foot riverfront area. And the um, tree clearing limit is basically at the at that riverfront area limit. So all of all of the work has been pulled out of jurisdictional areas in this in this section of the site. Um, I'm sure, as you all know, that, that that there was no work proposed within any jurisdictional areas down in the southeast corner. And then uh, the only other uh, there there are no other sort of alterations to the to the plan. But uh, just as 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 Dave was talking about earlier, here are the small portions of area that. Uh, that Dave was was talking about before. Um, so there is one small corner in, uh, over in the very northeast corner of the site, and then along the roadway. But again, that was um, not you know not in relation to this proponent, uh, this applicant, or this or this proposed project. <laughs> okay, thank you. Questions, Carol. No questions. Kwame. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I didn't catch where that uh, fence line was again, Christopher. Sure. You want me to? I can share. I can share again real quick. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Not a problem. Do that again. Yep. It's no. It's no longer straight. It's got a bump in it. Oh yeah. That's right. 
That's right. It goes basically a lot. So this this solid line is the riverfront area line. You can see it labeled here, 200 for riverfront area. And then the fence line is this line with the dots along it. And the, so that that fence line is going along out the out just the, just along the outside of the riverfront area. And that's within the the limits, right? Yes. David? Yeah. Okay. And I also see a street a tree line will be along that fence, correct? I, I don't understand the, the question. I do, the little scallopy stuff is the tree line, right? Correct. Okay, so we're going to maintain the tree line at the two hundred foot. Okay, thank that, you. Right. Michael, you. questions? Uh, nope, not thank you. Alyssa. So my question, I'm not sure where it goes. It have you put aside the decommissioning money and everything? Not, uh, else not our, not us. That's planning. That's planning. Okay. Yes. Right. Um, Let's see. And the trees that David was talking about. David said there'd been some trees taken. Um, yes, those were in the areas that Chris just had up on the screen, which I showed um, previously on this plan, mm -hmm. which were sort of in this area here, and then Where's also down cursor? in this corner of the property here. Where's your cursor? Right here. The See the circle? On the far right. Oh, he's well, on. See yeah. the semi semicircle yeah. lines? That's where it is. Yes. How long ago was it was all that work done? It wasn't done for this project, was it? No, it was it not. It must have been done for this uh sand removal project. Yes, that that's correct. So um that is when all of this work occurred. Um, and they obviously did work within the buffer without coming to us to have that approved. Um, so that is a violation essentially for doing that with no approval. Okay. Alyssa, anything else? No, just to, are we, are, does that mean David feels there's a fine ability? It could be. It could be. Okay. Denise? Um, I'm uh, assuming it's a raised fence. That's right. We, yeah, we talked about that before, that we would have a gap at the bottom right. for small animal passage. Right. And thank you for pulling back from the riverfront area from our discussion last week and for maintaining the tree line along the fence. Um, if the, my, my understanding then is we're going to pull out the uh, sand project and handle that separately from this solar project is that no correct? it's all one it's all one piece of property so we can't approve the, like we did no. with the last project part of the solar and handle no. them separately okay dave has already requested continuation correct dave uh i did request a continuance for the plan revision i didn't see the plan revision obviously and so okay. just so, now um, all right but I would, I still would like to make sure I'm seeing everything that's within that. Um, okay. Since again, I haven't had a chance to see it up, up so until. So Denise, tonight. when we get when we get a copy of that plan revision, we will talk about the um, clearing of the wooded uh, acreage. Yeah, that this two small sections that had been cleared under previous um, sand removal projects. So we can talk about it at that time for possible fine. Okay. So, um, Nicole, anything? No questions. Thank you. I have none. I think I've commented enough on this project. Is there anybody on the line that would like to comment on this project? Uh, good evening, Barry Cosgrove. Yes, Barry. Uh, if the project's going to be, excuse me, please, if the hearing is going to be uh, continued, I'll uh, I'll hold my comments for the next hearing. Well. Okay, will your comments have anything to do with what you've been hearing tonight? Uh, they, they'll, they'll be amplified by looking at the plan, I'm sure. When we see the new plan. Correct. All right, um, anybody else want to comment on this project before we continue until 6.15? 
motion to close the hearing? No, no. continue. Continue. Oh, I'm sorry, just continue the hearing. I have a motion. Second. And a Hopefully second. Can have me. To continue until 615. All in favor, Carol? Yes. Tommy, Michael, yes. and yes. Lisa, Denise. Yes. Sandy, yes, we're continued until the 615th. Next hearing is the Hamilton Beach Association. Thank you. Is there Thank anybody you. here? Yes, is there anybody here on this project to represent this project? Kevin, Kevin Grant. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. Mr. Bichette will read to the project. All right, I'm just gonna get this uh, plan pulled up here. Okay, Mr. Bichette, up, off you go. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so this project site is at Hamilton Beach, and this project involves um, the placement of beach nourishment on a coastal beach and within a coastal flood zone at this site. Um, the site is also within the estimated habitat of rare and endangered species. Approximately 42 cubic yards of beach sand are proposed to be placed on the main beach um, within a gullied out area that had been eroded away during a past storm event um, to replace that lost sand and to fill in the gully. Um, the source sand would be of a compatible grain size with the existing beach sand. Um, the area is within a coastal flood zone, zone VE elevation 18 and VE elevation 20. Um, all of the sand would be placed above the mean high tide line. Um, the sand would be dumped and spread out with a, a small machine to match the existing grades on either side of the washed out area. Uh, portions of the upper beach area are to be planted with Ameri American beach grass to help stabilize the, the sand that's being placed. Uh, once the beach sand has been placed, it is also proposed to install a five foot wide, 100 foot long beach access mat. Um, this would be something to provide easier access for handicapped individuals or for those with um, mobility issues. Um, the mat would be removed seasonally. Uh, we do have a DEP file number for this project, but at this point I have not seen comments from Mass Natural Heritage. Um, so I would recommend the hearing be continued to the next meeting to get those comments. Kevin, anything to add? No, I've been, <clears throat> excuse me, working with Emily Holt um, at uh, the National Heritage and she's, she needs nine days to get a, a letter to us. Well, I'm going to say something. This was supposed to come before us so on May 4th. Why is she now working on it? Why wouldn't she have started it in May? Uh, she claims they never received the application. I have certified letters and, and, and all from, okay, that, from her that's... and I actually... That's too bad because I'm sure you wanted this nourishment done before your summer season started. Okay, yeah, Kevin, well, anything it's a, else? It's a safety hazard. Anything else to add? No. Okay, um, questions, Carol? No questions. Kwame? Uh, no questions. Michael? No, thank you. Alyssa? No questions. Denise? When I was out to the site, um, it appeared that there had been a set of stairs that were just buried. There's a set of stairs. Shouldn't they have been? Those removed? stairs are about. Those stairs are about fifty years old. There was a whole. Uh, I know, but they were just to go out. They were just covered. I mean, shouldn't they have to be removed and be regraded? Isn't that a safety issue? Well, the, well thing, we, the thing is, is previously they were they were totally buried under the sand, so they weren't even exposed. They were just completely under the sand. 
and that's okay? Well, we're going to do again. Yeah, it's not a problem. It's just the way the beaches existed for a number of years, and they just became exposed during this storm event when all the sand got washed away. So they're going to recover the steps. Uh, as far to my knowledge, that's the case, right, Kevin? Yes, we're we're covering the steps. It's a safety hazard, and what happened? They did a, a previous NOI uh, years ago. I forget what the date was on it. Um, I left it at my other house. And it was approved. They put sand in, and the sand washed away um, during uh, Ira, and the steps were exposed. And it was just—it's—it's it's a safety hazard. The whole thing, the old drain is exposed and and whatnot. It's—we're just trying to get sand put in to, for safety reasons. That's all. So you're going to cover that all back up again, and that's where the mat is going, or where's the mat going? The mat is is going to go down the middle. Yes, um, okay. right over just a small portion of the stairs just to try to maintain woods hole recommended the mat in order to, to stop the uh, sand from washing out again okay okay that i just wanted to know what was going on with the steps is, is this the same uh -huh. mat that the that the uh, town is doing for the public beaches it's, i have is it it's, it's essentially the same thing it may not be the same exact product manufacturer but it's basically the same thing. So why are two people putting mats down on this beach because this is not a town this mats. is hamilton beach this is not a town beach right. this is a different location okay all right um nicole uh no questions thank you now kevin i was curious there was a sign saying no vehicles allowed but while i was there there were tire tracks going down your um little path over to the right all the way down to the beach. Is there any way to prevent vehicles from coming onto the beach other than a sign saying no vehicles, which seems cannot be enforced? Yeah, there, just is, a, there just, is actually just, a gate. Yeah, there's a gate there. We can close the gate. I didn't, I wasn't aware of that. Well, I was out there early May when this was the first hearing so that they had had to have done the traveling on the beach after last high tide. So this was, I don't know whether or not you want to put a post in the middle of the walkway to prevent vehicles or I don't know, but I was, oh, no vehicles, but look, tire tracks. Okay, that was just my No, point. you're right. Yep, we will, we'll, we'll do something to prevent that. We apologize for that. Well, no, it's your beach. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, is there anybody on the line that would like to comment on this project? Hearing and seeing none. Move to close the hearing. To, co to continue. Thank oh, you continue. I'm sorry. I see a hand up. <laughs> Carol Couture's got a hand, waving hand up. Ooh. I don't see it. Of course, I don't see all, ever, all the participants. Carol, if you unmute yourself and you have a question, we can hear what you want us to ask. I'm seeing no activity. No activity. No. Okay. So we're continuing mm -hmm. it because why are we continuing it? Comments from Natural Heritage. Oh, Natural, oh, natural Heritage. heritage. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry about them. that, Dave. Darn them. That's, that's okay. Okay, so we have the motion it's, uh, to a second. I have a motion and a second to continue all in favor. Carol, yes, Kwame, yes. Michael, and Lisa, yes. Denise, Sandy, yes. we're continued. And I sure hope and Kevin, you can get that woman to comply so we can get this close. You can get it on the beach before it's port. Okay. So appreciate so it. Thank you so much. Continued to 615, right? Yes. Continued yeah. until 615. Okay, the next hearing is Wareham MA3. They request a continuance until 615. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, Carol? Yes. Kwame, Michael, yes. Elise, Absolutely. Yes. Denise, yes. Sandy, we're continued. And I believe, Mr. Bouchette, it's up to you on the enforcement orders. Uh, yes, we have. Um... 
an enforcement order to discuss for um, Robert McDuffie for a property uh, off of Station Street. Um, he is here on the line tonight, along with um, a representative from JC Engineering. Um, Brad Bertolo is on the line. So this is a situation where there's been some um, work that involved uh, pushing fill material into the buffer zone of wetlands at a site without conservation commission approval. Um, so this was associated with um, a commercial business that Mr. McDuffie operates. And so I met him down there at the site and we took a look around and uh, he recognizes that some material has been pushed into areas that it should not have been and he's agreed to remedy the situation. Um, and he's going to be having uh, JC Engineering, JC Engineering uh, handle the filing of a notice of intent to present a plan to correct the circumstances down there. This is a property that at one point in time we had approved uh, a single family house to be built on, um, but that order of conditions has since expired. Um, and that's what the circumstance is. And I'll ask, let the commission ask any questions of the owner um, if, if that's what they want to do. Um, Mr. McDuffie, did you want to comment? You're just muted, Bob. There. How about now? There you go. Yeah, yeah. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. So, so ultimately, I want to resolve this. And, and uh, Ms. Bichette has been more than uh, helpful in trying to guide me through this uh, issue. So um, as, I, as I look to uh, JC Engineer, and I'd like to see if we could get this remedied as soon as possible. OK, thank you. No questions on the board. Uh, Carol? No questions. Kwame. No questions, thank you. Michael. Uh, thank you. Elisa. None, thank you. Denise. Not at this time. Nicole. No, thank you. And I have none, so that um, JC Engineering and Mr. McDuffie will work with Mr. Bichette to get this pushed back on top of the hill where it belongs. Thank you. Oh, we need to ratify the enforcement order. So let's see. I move that we ratify the enforcement order. Second. I have a motion and second. All in favor? Carol? Yes. Kwame? Yes. Michael? Elisa? Yep. Denise? Yes. Sandy? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, next on the line. All right. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, uh, Brad. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. All right, now, Nicole. Yes. Uh, do you have any issues or questions if we recommend you to be a full voting member? I do not. Um, I'm trying to think, I don't really have anything. Are you comfortable? I think I, I generally understand for the most part, um, I'm still, obviously not completely caught up with all of the laws, but um, I plan to, uh, David sent us that, um, the training websites where we can learn more about that kind of stuff. So I'm definitely going to utilize that. Okay, all right. Is there any questions on the commission? If not, I will take a motion to recommend her appointment to a full member. I move that we recommend Nicole as a full member. Second. 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 All in favor, Carol? Yes. Kwame? Yes. Mike, yep. Lisa, Denise, yes. Sandy. Yeah. So that's six zero zero. Jessica, are you on the line? Jessica? All right. Um, she was she wanted to apply for an associate position, so I'm reluctant to um, make a recommendation to appoint her as associate unless we until we can have another discussion with her and she can attend more than one meeting. Um, Kwame, did you get my email? Uh, when did you send it out? 
this afternoon, of course. Oh, uh, no, I could check now. <laughs> While he's checking that, I asked him a question and I'd like to have him read it and see, give me a response. Denise, can you do us a favor? Yes. Can you research what's necessary to have a hybrid a, a meeting? Yep. Because it isn't just us sitting at the meet at the uh, room 320. It isn't Mr. White recording it. It's having to have somebody handle a, a Zoom meeting for questions or uh, comments coming in from the public. So it's more than just uh, having Mr. White there and us face to face. So if you could do some research for us and get back to us at the next meeting as to what might, what would have to happen. Okay. Because I know planning does a uh, hybrid, but they do have someone from the planning department handling the Zoom component, and we don't have that luxury. Right. I know they have more well, than one person. Well, yep. I, yeah, actually, the person that's handling the Zoom component is, is an employee of uh, Wareham Cable TV. So there's one person recording the video, and then there's a second person doing the Zoom part. So it's not so, actually somebody from the planning board that's doing anything. So why do they always ask, Aaron, is there anybody on the line? Um, well, uh, that's a good question. I don't know. So I think that's part of what Denise is going to do researching for us. Yeah. Okay. Kwame, did you see my email? You know, I, I don't see anything from you from today. I apologize and I'm not sure what the heck. Could I be could I be in your trash folder? Oh, oh I no. <laughs> or no your oh, uh, <laughs> spam. No. Okay. Never Are that. Yeah. Uh, you can you can uh, I mean is this something personal or private? I mean you can ask. No, I, mean, I will ask. I'm not embarrassed. Um, we now have a chair and a vice chair, and I believe conservation needs a clerk. And I was going to ask you if you're willing to be that position for us. And my note went to you as to what that entailed. A okay. clerk is someone who would be reading the public hearings. A clerk is somebody that will do the initial review of all draft minutes and make and have changes made and then set, submit to the rest of the commission for approval. And the uh, clerk would be someone managing um, our minutes to make sure that they're done by somebody other than themselves. Is that a good way to put it? I understand, and I will try my best to be the clerk, if appointed. <laughs> there you go, folks. Denise, so moved. I, I, have, I have a motion. Get him quick. Call me our clerk. A second. And I have a second. All in favor is Carol. Yes. Michael. Yep. Elisa. Yes. Yes. Denise. Sandy. Yes. Kwame. Yes. Ta -da. But he's going to vote against himself. Yeah. Yes, he can vote for himself. Six no, zero against zero. against himself. Yeah. Oh, well, I have six zero zero to uh, appoint Kwame our clerk. Six zero zero to recommend uh, Nicole be uh, voted a full member. And um, Denise has got mm -hmm. a um, little project to work on. Is there anything else we need to do tonight? Uh. Sandy, I just wanted to double check with you because I was a couple minutes late uh, to the meeting when you were going over minutes. Uh, there's one that I was assigned to, correct? Yeah, you did. You did the January 5th, and that's the one we just approved. And you also said that you would be willing to do the May 4th one. Yes, I have my notes right here. That's I was trying right. to find the date on it. Okay. So. Oh, right now we have, I'm doing 420, Dave's doing 425, you're doing 54, Kwame's doing 518, and Michael will do 61, just to make sure we're current. Wow, Michael got an easy one. <laughs> and somewhere down the line, uh, Kwame, I believe there is budgeted money for a, a town employee to do our minutes after on uh, July 1. But I, I don't know who that is yet, but I will be keep asking. Um, May, if you, you all got my email about this unapproved dock that showed up in the Agawam River. And yeah. uh, Mr. Bichette will be doing an enforcement order to that homeowner. And it I should have a be question. on. Shall I, I, I just, on wait one sec. Wait one second. 
It should be on the 615 set of agenda for enforcement order. Yes, your question. Who owns the property between the fence and the playground? The town of Wareham, it's a, it's a paper road called Apple Street. Because all the way at the end, there's been some tree cutting. Yes, because it all blew down. No, no, I mean, little stubby things. I mean, I, I actually injured myself today. On, well, the, on, job. The, on, on, the, on the job. On the job No, I was just wondering, are they allowed to just clear all that back in there? No, well, but I don't, I don't know. That area at the end of Apple Street has always been marshy and cleared when we were working right. on the playground years ago. It isn't something that just happened. I mean, it's been... Yeah. It's all oh muddy God, and stuff. There were, there were stumps left, and I ended up tripping on one of these stumps. And mm. I don't know where those stumps came leg. from, but yeah. um, and there's also you know, a chain, there's a chain link fence laying down in. And the I don't know. Area. I don't know where that came from. That's been there for years and years. So I'm not sure where that chain link However, fence came from. However, the dock is new. Yeah, the dock the is dock, brand new. A dock appears to be brand new. And there's two lots there, so I'm not sure who owns the lot the dock is on. Well, I already sent out the enforcement order, so... so we'll um, see what happens. That's right. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. The other but thing I, have been, I have been receiving quite a few emails about people complaining about things in town. And as I research them, I let Mr. Bichette have the information so he can say whether or not there is an issue, but this doc really okay. did bother me. That's why I shared it with everybody. Lisa has okay. her hand up. Yes. Sandy, on, on this um, complaint that the townsperson made to you, they stated that, that this doc stopped their walking. And quite honestly, I don't think it's all wetland. They'd be sloshing through anyway. Well, they so can walk at low. They can walk at low tide, and to me, they're they're just as easy to walk over on top of the um, pier in order to get to the other side of the pier. There's nothing preventing them from doing it. Well, it, I mm. guess the height would. I what I was saying is that I really don't see that it was. It's a walkable trail anyway. Well, at low but, tide, I did it. You did. Yeah, yeah, and some people will fish like in the area at low tide, so. Um, you know, that could be a hindrance for sure. And okay. as far as the way that dock was built, that certainly is not something we would have approved at all for, for no a number way. of reasons. Um, like so that, sitting that on whole, the ground? Yeah. Yeah, that whole thing is going to have to be removed 100%. And uh, then somebody can, if they want to, apply for something down the road. But between the, the height of it above the marsh, which is incorrect, the posts that it was used to, to hold it up are too right. small. Right. The, float, it, the float is in no water at low tide. I mean, everything that could be wrong with that is wrong. So um, <laughs> the whole thing has to be taken out. Okay. Did you get a chance on another topic to look at um, the trees down at Shell Point that got cut down? I did not hear about any trees at Shell Point that got cut down. Um, where they wanted that dock on Shell and that they have the the lawyer or the lawsuit or whatever yeah. against us. Oh, you, um, mean Shell, you mean Shell Lane. Lane. Okay. Shell Lane. Okay. Is yeah, that Shell Connolly? Lane. Is that Connolly? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. Yes. They, they, instead of the path that was there going straight down to the water, they've now cleared a path that curves over to the left and taken down all the trees that were in there. They weren't really big trees, but they were trees. Going yeah, so, so I didn't I didn't witness that, but none of that should have occurred since um, this project is under appeal, so there should be no right. work. And just so that you know, Dave, I told them that that day that we were there with the um, you the were there. I was there. Yeah, by myself. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Defining what a tree was. All by yourself. <laughs> All by myself. But yes, I did tell them that day not to do that, and they just went ahead and did it anyway. Yeah, so that'll be brought to the attention of DEP and, and um, they'll have to take that into account when they do their review and, yeah. you know, because it's in their hands at the moment. Um, right. But it is still in our hands to a degree as well because it's still under our, our wetland bylaw. So okay. there's a, a violation under the wetland bylaw that certainly a fine could be issued uh, for that work. Okay, all right. 
Anything else? Um, a question, it doesn't pertain to any of our meetings here tonight. The tree removal that happened on the bluff and onset, has yep. there been any kind of information come forward about how that happened? And I've heard nothing. I've heard nothing from the police or anything like that. No. Mm -hmm. Same here. I've I've heard nothing. They've not discovered who the the, the person responsible was at this point in time. Um, I can follow back up with them and say, hey, where are things at? They may tell me we are at a dead end and we can't identify anyone. So, um, but I can get that answer one way or the other. It's the person who has the silent chainsaw we're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> right. oh, wouldn't that be the ocean beavers <laughs> i have one more question though when there's yes. when there's tree removal that has gone on we've done fines but are we able to have them restore the areas like when they cut down the trees and then they get this gorgeous view from their home now um we don't seem to be telling them that they have to put trees back in can we do what that size tree well, we, we have done that on, on a number of sites over the course of time. And yes, the commission does have the authority to require disturbed areas to be restored. So um, we've done that before, and that's certainly uh, within the commission's purview to require that. And can you tell them like what size tree they have to put in or? Oh, how yeah. Do, how do you do that? You yeah. Know? Oh, good. <laughs> the, like the, type, the type of tree, the size of the tree, yes. I mean, within reason, you can't tell them to go put a 40 foot tree in because that's not going to happen, you know, right. but, I mean, you can you can tell them to put in a decent sized tree because sometimes they'll get away with wanting to put in like a, a little whip, you know, which is basically right. as wide as your finger, which is going to take a while to, to become anything, but you can require trees that are like two inch caliper trees um, might require something like a bobcat to get it to where it needs to go if that's okay. what the commission i know we to. didn't do that on the one um where the gentleman didn't know who his contractor was and he had paid cash to somebody well I, well I, actually that to me is not a dead issue i still think that needs to be done because we should require them to replant something in that 30 foot no and how do we go this is, the, this is the one down the end of uh, murphy street in Swiss correct Beach. Yes. Um, so how do we go about doing that? We just send them uh, a letter and say, this is what we are requiring because of this violation. So you, you know, we could spend some time and determine the number of trees and the size of the trees. And we send them a letter saying, this is what's required based on the violation. Did we close the Sorry, did we close the hearing? No. Well, it wasn't a hearing. It was an enforcement. enforcement. Was an enforcement. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that enforcement order is still outstanding. So Denise, we can okay, make something I happen. Really, I really think we need to do that because a three hundred dollar fine just doesn't cut it. I think are, are you talking? Commission, I, I think really needs to start to have more teeth um, in these violations, and not I just agree. give a Elisa, dollar fine. Yes. You wanted to say something? No. Oh, I thought you were speaking and Denise were speaking at the same time, so I didn't hear you. No, okay. I think somebody, I think, I think it was Nicole. Oh. Well, that, well, down, um, also down at the um, site where Mr. Parento is doing his projects down the end of Over Jordan Road, he had disturbed some wetlands and we required restoration plantings there. Okay. Um, so that... Oh. That is something that we required in that particular site, and we've done it on other sites as well. Okay, good. I have. I think question. we have to be aware. And just keep doing that. Yes, Cole. Um, I was just curious if if we if we tell them that they have to replant trees and they don't do it, is there like a certain time frame, or do we get to decide? We, uh, we we typically will select the time frame and, and make it during the, an appropriate time frame, which is the right time of the year to plant trees, for example, in the spring or the fall. Right. Um, so we do give them a certain latitude in terms of a time frame, but then if they don't meet that, then the commission does have the ability to either issue more fines or bring some other level of enforcement to the to the applicant if they're not trying to comply with what we want them to do. Yeah, so we do have other options. Okay, I was just curious about that. Sure. 
And I'm sorry, I had my phone on. We've had another mass shooting. Oh, no. uh, uh, yeah. Never mind. I'm sorry. I did, shouldn't have been watching my phone, but I did. Um, is there anybody on this line would like to make a comment before we hang up? I guess not. So, folks, um, I move thank that we you very close much. The hearing. No, I have meeting. a motion to adjourn. Um, a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. At seven fifty. At seven fifty. It's still okay. light out, by the way. Awesome. <laughs> <It is. laughs> so, thank you, every everybody in favor of adjourning. Raise, adjourning, raise your hand. I, it's anonymous. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good one. All have right, a good have night.